With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Welcome to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? A phrase that many women can't wait to recite on that big day. However, there are plenty of women who happily ever after is not their desire. Later in the show, we're asking whether there's an expectation on women to desire marriage and why is the assumption that there's something wrong with you if you don't want to be a bride. But before we do that, let's speak to the chief bride. My word. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> catching up with South Africa's favorite. Whether it's frolicking on the beaches of Seychelles as the presenter of Tropical Island of Treasure, doing the Vosha with Olympic athlete Usain Bolt, do you remember that earlier this year? Or escaping to Paris with her besties for her bridal shower. She certainly has got a fairy tale life. This June, she'll be sharing the sights and the sounds of the FIFA World Cup host nation with her new TV show from Russia with love. She's also changing gears as she moves behind the camera to produce a new reality competition show that will be hitting our screen soon. She is Indombiyom Zulu, South Africa's diamond, Minente Damini Jones! <laughs> Huh? Chief I love pride. that, Chief Pride. Chief Pride. I'll claim it, I'll you, it. Babe, you have to, because <laughs> now everyone is going to wedding planners. They're like, I want Minnie's wedding. Oh my goodness. Maybe you shouldn't become a producer. Become a wedding planner and just whatever you did for your wedding, you serve as that. Right? Nah. I just think it's a lot of stress. It's really? a, yeah, it's a lot of stress. I think what people don't realize with that process is that it's more than just planning a wedding, but it's yeah. about understanding the emotions that go through it. Because everyone goes crazy. Yes. I went crazy. Really? I lost my mind. How crazy did you go? Like quite crazy. I cried up until the day before my wedding. Okay, what's one of the things you remember crying about? Just crying about stress. Like stress, like, is everything gonna work out okay? Are the things gonna happen the way that you want them to happen? Is it added on because it's a, it's a TV show, it's a documentary that the entire country is waiting for? I'll be honest with you, that was the least of my worries. That was probably the, the easiest part of the process for me, was doing Becoming Mrs. Jones. Really? Promise you. Because I worked with a team that was just out yeah. of this world. Okay. You know, I always tell people, I was like, work with people that are stronger, that know more, that are better, so that you are able to achieve the things that you want to achieve. Because no man's an island. So wait, when you're crying, are you not like, where are the cameras? Get this. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're making TV, you know tears are good, right? right? <laughs> no, so there was, there was one point where, before my traditional wedding, there was something wrong with the marquee. Yeah. And changing the marquee dimensions and whatever, whatever. But basically, yeah. within that whole process, I'm now sitting in tears, and we had found out that one of the publications had gotten a hold of my traditional wedding invite. Oh. And they were going to publish it, like, the very next day. So do they call day. you and be like, hey, this is, this is a threat. We're firing a warning shot. Yep. What do they want? Do they want money? They wanted exclusive, an exclusive. Oh, okay. And, and you know, at some, t at some point, you know, you're not ready for that. And I know I've got the show and that's supposed to be the exclusive. So it was a bit of a catch-22 for me at that point. But um, yes, yeah, so I was crying on my parents' balcony, um, crying tears, tears. what is tears. your mom saying? Because she's just, queen is the, the queen comforter, right? Yeah. Her, your mom's chest is the most comfortable place in the world. Literally, <laughs> right? <laughs> when she hugs me, I'm like, don't let go. Please, don't let go. stay here forever. <laughs> no, it was her wedding, so she was running around <laughs> dealing with that. Um, I always say, like, both weddings was, was definitely my mother's, my mother's wedding. Yeah. And I gave it to her. My only daughter, I said, have it. It's yours. Do you know how you're going to get your mom off your back? How? I know. Stop it. Uh, at Christmas, she goes, sing your gook. I would like to see my grandchildren, please. Exactly. So, okay, so I understand there's a lot of conversations happening around you. Quentin's mother wants some grandkids. Everybody. Your mother, your father deserves some grandchildren <laughs> up in here, okay? Right. But when do you and Quentin sit down and first have that conversation? We've had that conversation, I think, 
since we've known each other. We were Even before a, you were dating? No, when we were dating and yeah. we knew that this is something, we were, I've always known he wanted kids. He's always been that guy, he's wanted kids. And I yeah. thought he was going to be like, marry me, he's going to want kids immediately. Yeah. So I was like, let's have a conversation. <laughs> um, and we're, it's amazing, we're both on the same page. We still want to give it a couple of years, but we're, we're also at a point where we're, we're ready for what God is, is willing to throw at us. Mm. So when the time is right, it, it, it will happen. Not not trying is not trying. Yeah, I know. That's, okay. that's what someone said to me yeah. the other day. Okay. They're like, well, <laughs> no. So we, we're not trying. You're not trying. We're not trying. You're just having fun now. We're just having fun and okay. enjoying being married. Speaking of babies, let's. I hear you've, you've called this baby from Russia with love. Yes. I thought, when I tweeted, I thought I was just joking. So no. you, you're going to be in Russia for the entire World Cup? Yeah. Interviewing people on that side, bringing us the Russian culture and all of that? All of that. And the show is going to be called From Russia With Love. It was actually a show that aired last year during the Confederations Cup. Ah. So when the Confederations Cup happens, that's usually like, you know, the, the guinea pig, the trial and the error, mock. the yeah. mock World Cup. And we had the show and it did really, really well. So we're doing it again this year. So I'm very excited. You went to the Brazil World Cup as well, right? I did. You were there for a bit. And I, so you I was did, there for the final. So you did 2010, then you did Brazil, mm -hmm. then you did Russia, and obviously you're going to do is it Qatar afterwards. Afterwards, I think it is Qatar. It is Qatar. Yeah. So do you not go comparing it to what we did? You're just like, yeah, well, we, did, we, we, this, we were better at this, we are better at that. I'll be honest with you, there still hasn't been... I mean, I've done a Rugby World Cup as well in yeah. London, which is really, really amazing. I've done a couple, and I, I, I won't even lie, South Africa killed it, knocked it out of and the park. And you're not saying that because... No, do you know what it was, is that we're really, really amazing people. Yeah. So more than just our ability to want to have fun all the time and having this massive platform to just have fun, yeah. it's, it's people just doing what they've always done at an elevated scale. Ah. Whereas I feel like a lot of these other countries, I mean, like Russia, first, it is a first world country, right? Mm. No, maybe not anymore. They, they, they're like touch us. And go. They're kind of touch like and us, go. But like, <laughs> but like Moscow is very cosmopolitan yes, yeah. and whatever. So they're used to sort of these kinds of things. Yeah. Um, Brazil was very similar to South Africa, but you actually don't realize when you travel, you realize that South Africa has so much infrastructure. True. We live so and good here. And maintained infrastructure. Exactly. Things are not falling apart at the seams here. Yeah. So the one thing I also know is that you're beautiful here, but you're beautiful everywhere else as well. I, I like how pretty I am that side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's too many of us, man. Yeah, there's 9,000 minutes I mean, all there. You girls like are gorgeous I, every two seconds. So what's the attention like? And what's your husband saying when you're like, I'm going to be gone for a month to go hang out with soccer players in Russia? Packs his bags and says he's coming with me. <laughs> So, <laughs> my dude. Right? Right? Yeah. So, and, and are you planning on, because I know you're doing a lot of the production thing and you've put that hat on and I love the fact that you've put that on Thank because, you. you know, when you have a pretty face, you actually forget to do some work. Sure. Right? And I like the fact that you're starting to do some, well, not starting, but, you know, going that way. So when, when you're doing, uh, getting these shows, is, is it always a conversation you, you broach with the, the, the channel, with the broadcast and say, can I possibly come on uh, as, a, as a producer of this? 100%. Mm. I mean, what's the point of having the platform that I have if I'm not able to utilize it or monopolize on it? Mm. So I literally sit there and I say, okay, well, this is what you guys want to do with me. This is what my team is capable of doing. Mm. Give us the opportunity to pitch. Mm. So it's not like just because I'm on it that... Give us the opportunity, give us the opportunity to, pitch. to pitch. You've obviously got your preferred, you know, people that you like to use. Yeah. We would just like the opportunity to pitch. And we've been so lucky, even with the World Cup, we've got an amazing World Cup campaign that we're starting, that my production company is shooting so mm. I'm very very excited about it production company name beautiful day productions roughly translated Minente. <laughs> <laughs> it's Minente in English <laughs> so I remember the first time I saw it I was like beautiful day but like, this is a pretty name wait a minute a beautiful day means Mini and so, oh gee, hello there. Hello. <laughs> right, right after yourself, right? Yeah. Listen, so much goes into a fairy tale wedding, right? So a lot of costs have been making their way in the a <laughs> rumor had us believing that Minnie and Quinton dropped six million rand on their wedding. <laughs> we are gonna get to the bottom of this. We have her here. She'll never answer this again. All right. <laughs> Come back after the break. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back to Real Talk with me, Annelie Mdoda, our lovely guest, Minente Damini Jones. It was the television event of 2017. And the millions of viewers who tuned in to watch caught it on the internet. They saw Minnie and Quentin's journey down the aisle. They all agreed that becoming Mrs. Jones broke ra ratings records. Fans got an intimate front row seat to Minnie's preparations, including Umembeso at her parents' home in KwaZulu-Natal, seeing her gorgeous bridal gown designed by Gert Johan Katia, as well as the breathtaking Lawrenceford Wine Estate in Somerset West, where she said her I do's. Six million rand. So now here's the thing. Yeah. Look, I was there. And when I heard the <laughs> six million rand, I'm like, look, it was beautiful and we got a hot braai at midnight because you I know mean, you know me and meat you and meat okay i was like we're, we're hungry now and we're <laughs> out there eating chops at midnight <laughs> in our beautiful dresses but when they said six men i'm like it, my, yeah, man, ga, ga. <laughs> it definitely was not six million rand i can tell you that for free did you get paid six million to do it no okay so where's this amount coming from? Someone just woke up one day and just decided to write it down. Like, don't you remember I had that seven million rand net bank story? Oh, yes. So people just, I, people love to give me millions. I just wish it would come in real life. <laughs> like, <laughs> can, can it stop being a rumor now, please? Like, stop, <laughs> just here's the bank account Brilliant. and put the money it in. It was not six million. Okay, so it wasn't six million. No. All, all, all right, so I hear that there are people who are wanting to sell you another reality show for when you fall pregnant. Yes. Walk me through how that works. No, after, you know, we got the ratings and after the success, you know, even a production was like, so when are you having a baby? When are we doing the, the becoming mommy Jones? And I'm like, I don't think that this is how that works. Why like, not? I'm, I think it's a good idea. Look, I've spoken to quite a few people and funny enough, a lot of industry people about yeah. it and mixed reviews, but a lot of people are like, it's not a bad idea. I mean, maybe let's see how a woman really feels during that process. A yeah. lot of people, especially on the gram, love to glamorize their, their pregnancies uh, and it's difficult and it uh, is tough and maybe show the real side of pregnancy. Mm. I get that, but I'm not well in the head. So <laughs> we can't be exposing that kind of stuff on screen. Yeah, because you also know? pregnancy, there's hormones, there's... But I just feel that you, you've proven, and it, it, I don't want to make it sound arrogant, like anything you put out, we're going to watch, right? Mm -hmm. You've proven that there's a certain authenticness that you bring, authenticity, that's what I'm looking for, gotcha. that you bring to things that you do, and that's why people will tune in, mm -hmm. right? And perhaps that's what people want to see in the journey that will come when there is a child, you know? Sure. I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to say never. I'm not going to say yes. Um, I don't know. At this point in my life right now, after having gone through the first process, mm. it took a lot. You know, it was very, very daunting. I remember, you know, before the first episode, mm. I had a viewing party with close friends and family, and I literally was sitting there, like, shaking. Were you on edge? I was so nervous because I'm like, well... This is me, and if people don't like it, I can't run away, I can't hide. It this means is, then they don't like They just like don't you. like me. And that was really, really difficult to have to go through. Mm. And I don't know, will it be different when I'm pregnant? You know, mm. am I, what are the expectations of, of wanting to then see the child? Am I okay with showing my child immediately? Uh, and, you okay. know, so I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's definitely not something in the cards. And at this point, definitely something I'm shying away yeah. from. I'm watching my wedding on social media. That was the best tweet of the day. I was in the car, literally, and I was like, oh, she looks amazing. Uh -huh. I'm in the car with my dad. I'm like, dad, pegu chesi, go go everyone's like going around, like looking at everyone. I saw the tweets, I saw some videos before I walked down the aisle, yeah. When you're walking down the aisle, what are you thinking? Um, funny story, you were there. You know what really happened? Yes. It looked really graceful graceful on TV, on TV. Mm. but it was it had rained literally a few seconds so it was before slippery. so it was slippery my my veil was actually sticking to the ground after my dress so every time I walked it was like pulling me back and falling off and as I'm I don't think I had a graceful 10 steps down the aisle I was like uh, yeah. and then I remember because I'm just going relax and I'm like okay and I was like that's me. Of course, I'm not going to have a graceful yeah. walk down the aisle. It was, it was very choppy and... and so, you, in your mind, you were like, just don't fall? Yeah, I was like, just don't fall. Uh. But also, I was like, of course, this is going to happen to me. Of course, my veil is going to come off and... But then, I'm of course, almost... a rainbow comes out after you guys say, I do. I mean, that, that was... 
my, the most amazing part of, of the whole thing is that I was literally in the car before I walked down the aisle. So yeah. it was raining. Yeah. Really was raining. And when everyone was ready and it was my t turn to walk down the aisle, when I walked out of the car, the rain stopped. And by the time I got to the end of, you know, just, just as you start to see me, the beginning of the aisle at, yeah. the, at the back, then the clouds cleared and the sun came out and then you saw a rainbow. And I was like, if I didn't know God existed, now I do. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Did you guys go for counseling before you got married? That's the one thing we didn't do, funny enough. And um, maybe it's still something we should do and still have uh. to go to. It just with the show and producing and uh. wearing the different hats that we did, we actually didn't, we didn't go through counseling. But I also believe that we, we also have a very different kind of relationship. Yeah. We were best friends for many, many years. So our communication is, is, is very intense. Yeah. You know, I speak to him like I speak to my best friend. Uh. And, and therefore there's, you know, a lot of things that new couples or, or couples that are about to get married. Like teething. Yeah, they're you still don't. trying to figure each other out. We've known each other for, for so many years. Yeah. So, so the, the double barrel surname, is that something you sit and you discuss? You're like, uh, let's, let's do double barrel. No, so basically we had a conversation and he said, you don't have to change your surname. You're Mini Damini, that's the brand that you've built. Don't change your surname. Mm. So I said, okay, cool. So what I'll do is I'll just change it legally. So legally, I'm Minetla Jones. Mini Damini no longer exists. Um, and then what happened is that a lot of people were like, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, just out of congratulations. And I just thought that with my husband being so willing to just let me keep my surname, yeah. I was like, why not have them both? All right. So it was a, it was a, it was sort of a like a present to him to say, well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in there. Oh. And then when it comes to, because I mean, you are a sex symbol, you know, he's got a family, and the family's emerging. Did anybody tell you to have like, oh, as, as bikini shorts? No. Really, no one. No. Oh, I'm, is... I'm allowed to do anything as long as he's comfortable with it. And he's comfortable and he's with it because he was your best it. friend. He's got it. And the night before your Umembeso, I know there were a lot of older women, your mother's friends, at your house, and they cornered you in the main bedroom. <laughs> yes. I want to know what was said in that main bedroom. Give us one thing that was said. Um, it was, more than anything, it was well wishes. It yeah. was good luck. It was preparation. But it was understanding that this responsibility comes with this position comes with a lot of responsibility. Yeah. That now I'm no longer just Mini Lamini. I am now Mrs. Jones. I now no longer represent the Lamini side of the family, yeah. but now I represent an entire new branch. Yeah. And everything I do and everything I say has consequences to those people. Yeah. It was understanding that I've got a whole new set of ancestors that I need to, oh, to wow. welcome into my life. Oh, wow. And it was also about understanding that being a good wife just means being a good person to my husband and us just always being in sync. As long as we're good, nothing else matters. Being a good wife means being a good person. Mm. Wow. Who said that? Do you remember who said that? Yeah. My gonna... mom. Ah! Queen again. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> more with Minnie on the other side of this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. Obviously. Yeah. Welcome back, you're on SABC3, you with Real Talk. Now, when people talk about friendship goals, I'm pretty sure they envy what Minnie and her squad of girlfriends share, from birthdays to high-profile events, personal losses suffered, and work achievements attained, the group of ladies, they look like a very tight-knit family. So now, the day after your wedding, when I lost my mind because somebody had leaked your dress, and I was out there wanting to swing someone, right? right? What's the conversation with you and your bridesmaids, you know, because, Obviously, there's a trust that's been broken. It's not them, obviously. Yeah. But now we're trying to make you feel better because obviously it's not a good thing. I think, to be honest with you, we, we knew right away that someone had snuck in and mm. taken the photo. That was very obvious. And, and we knew who it was. And so it, there wasn't really a, a trust broken from the friendship perspective. I think everyone was just trying to make sure that we had a good day. I mean, we had a bra the next yeah. day and just relaxed. And everyone was just like, just let it go. We'll deal with this on Monday or yeah. on Tuesday. But um, let's just enjoy your first day of being married. And then the negative PR that followed afterwards? Yeah, that was, that was really, really unfair because I was so tired. You know when you just like, I feel like I've been on 120 mm. and now I'm like, oh, finally I can let my hair down. Mm. And then a whole 
another wave of, of issues came by. Um, it, was, it was a very difficult time, and I felt like, you know, you know when you sit there and you're like, I wish people would just cut me some slack. Yeah. You know, yeah. can, can, can I just get five minutes to enjoy this? Yeah. And just immediately the day after, you know, the most beautiful day of my life has to be tainted with negativity. That wasn't fair. But then again, um, I signed up for this business. Yeah. Um, and I don't welcome it by any means. Yeah. And I wish it would stop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do understand it. And, and, and I've developed a thick skin and I've, I've been able to, to, to move on when those things happen mm. and, and allow myself to focus on, on what really matters. I know you can't say it, but I will. I really find uh, your wedding planner was quite unprofessional. Uh, there's things that you, especially if you're going to stand up for a business like this, discretion is, the, is what you sell, my angel. So that's my two cents about it, but you can keep quiet. Yeah. Um, but quickly, who is Deputy Mrs. Jones? <laughs> Azola Mona. <laughs> Azola. Okay, so Azola's been your best friend since when? She's been my bestie since first year varsity. Was it difficult to... to, to to, main, to, to like name her the maid of honor, because you've got tight friends, because the other one you've known since you were six, six yeah. the other one since you were 13, so how do you then pick who the maid of honor is? So for me, it just boiled down to um, the person who's with me on a day to day. Yeah. Someone who I know knows what I like, knows what I don't like, and who who has just been who's in my day to day life. And and mm. that's what it boiled down to. But also at the end of the day, you know, just because someone has been friends with you for a really long time yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that they're perfect for or fit for that role. That's true. I mean my one of my best friends, Kara, who I've been she's not even my friend, she's my sister. It is better to bend than it is to, to break. break. Yes. One of my best speeches yeah. actually. And she she said to me at the end of it, she's like, of course I was upset initially because yeah. I thought it should have been me. But I then understand that as adults, we're different and you have different needs. Yeah. And I understood my role at the traditional. And a lot of people... Hi, girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> cutie. <laughs> you oh, look so cute. Thank you. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Guys, so you're busy chatting to me, Dr. Lana. What are you wearing? Oh, my God. <laughs> you look so cute. <laughs> It's your bestie. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was just waiting for you to keep quiet. And then I wanted to ask you, so what did Azola think of, of being called maid of honor? And then I was like, don't worry, don't answer it. She'll sure, answer it But knowing her, she just walked on like, hey, I'm here. Yes, hey, I'm yeah, here. Queen. So maid of honor, I'm right? Here. It's a big thing. It I is. mean, we know your friend Minnie, right? Mm -hmm. And you understand that it's going to be, you know, uh, re recorded as a documentary. <laughs> Like, weren't you going? <laughs> I was. I definitely was. Also, I wasn't really prepared for all the attention afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, like, people will come up to me and I'm like, "Can I take a picture?" And I'm like, "With who?" Yeah. I'm confused. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you want a picture with me? So, um, but I mean, I was very happy to to be the maid of honor, and I was very. Um, it was a proud moment for me. Yeah. yeah. And what would you say in the entire process? Do you feel needed you the most, right? Because you don't get trained to be a bridesmaid or to be a maid of honor. You have to learn as you go. Mm -hmm, 100%, but I think it depends on how well you know your friend. Yeah. And um, we have a very good connection. We barely fight. Like if she, if I feel like she's being extra, I'm just like, shut see you second round because I can't deal with this yeah. right now. So I think that was the main role that I played, especially because there were so many different personalities coming together yeah. and the bridesmaids were a lot. And also there's no shy one in the bridesmaids. All no, you guys exactly. Like, no, not at all. No, 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 no. Not at all. Everyone is just like, me too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just, just to calm everyone down if there were any like hectic moments. She was a bridezilla, I won't lie. I was about to ask. She yeah. definitely was. I definitely she was. was. For sure. What's a, when do you think, okay, now you're a bridezilla, is she like, I want everyone's hair like this. I want no, you to walk like She wasn't a bridezilla in terms of like the details of the thing. She would let us be like, okay, what hairstyle do you want to have? These uh. are your options. But she was just, I don't know, it was, it was her. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Like, yeah. I'd snap. Like, there'd be days where everything's fine, and then one moment I'm just yelling at everyone. But because you want things the way you want them. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just also just because I was just dealing with a lot of mm. stress and. I took a lot of my stress out on them. Mm. And I guess... One but that's, that's why they're there. And that's why they're and there. And that's why you must pick friends who, who love you in that. your lowest moment. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've been a bridesmaid once, and I was like, OK, you're going to hear... Just <laughs> testing our friendship. <laughs> we cried. Yeah, we there cried There were times when we cried. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and we look at each other and like, why are we crying?
<laughs> but you guys went to Paris. Were you crying in Paris? We cried in Paris. Paris. What, what were you crying in Paris? What are you crying about? <laughs> you what? Do you, we, we, do you even cry in English? Do you cry like we, we, s'il vous plaît? Yeah, man, we just, we cried a lot. It was also one of the, one of the biggest mistakes I think I made was planning the bachelorette the week before the wedding. Yeah. So I'm literally in Paris sitting, supposed to be having the time of my life, which we did, I won't lie. We had the most incredible time. But while I was there, I'm dealing with flowers and this yeah. and that. And yeah. I wish I had sort of done it a lot earlier so that I didn't have to deal with those sort of last minute. Last minute questions yeah. and all of that. Seating plan, this. I mean, I think the first yeah. day we were there, we did the seating we plan. We did the seating plan. Yeah, WhatsApp. What? What glamorous problems to have. We're doing the seating plan in Paris. <laughs> you know, we've just finished the 10th bottle of champagne. And uh, my words literally was with. the 10th bottle of champagne. I know, I watched. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Azola, yes. when it comes to, you know, the, the bridesmaids, there's costs. Who paid for all of it? What happens? Because that's what ends people in fights and friendships end. Because, yeah, she charged me for her dress. No, 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 no. No, she handled a lot of the... I mean, it was her wedding, which I think is how it should go. She handled yeah. a lot of the costs. I agree yeah. with that. It's your wedding, you, you want this, Moss. I didn't say I want... I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth, and it, it's my philosophy. Yeah. yeah. So she handled a lot of the costs, and then um, anything over and above, then obviously we all... Um, so, listen... There's something borrowed, something blues. She, Minnie got dressed in my room and she forgot this box where the earrings came in that you had borrowed from someone. No, it was my <laughs> Tiffany. I've been looking for that box have for you so long. Really? It's my Tiffany. Really? My something borrowed. Oh, there you go. Oh, you guys can have it back. This Daddy. is our best friend bracelet. Exactly. I've and been yeah, I am. Do you have you really? Yeah. Yes. I have the bracelet. Just you have the, the bracelet. <laughs> so the bracelet um, didn't quite work with my dress. Yes. <laughs> so she wore it as I, an ankle. No, Did you put it in your bra? I put it in my boobs. Oh. I mean, can I say that? Sorry, I put yeah. it in my chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Listen, we want to see this, right? When there's parenthood happening, when there's weddings happening, this friendship, yes. I like I'll it. I'll handle the parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> because we you guys are really, you're good, you're, you're a good fit because I've seen you fall out and I've seen you get, get back together mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. And this is why I know you guys are besties, so please keep this up. We will. Mrs. Yeah. Jones, thank you for your time. Thanks for having Ms. us. Mrs. Mona, thanks for your time. Thanks, thanks for the surprise. Jaja. A very big thank you to our guest, Mrs. Jones, and vice Mrs. Jones. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Jones, as well as her bestie, Azola Mona. After the break, are you feeling pressured to get married, especially after this. Uh, we've got differing views on the answer to this. Uh, both of the views are coming up. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk on ACBC3. Thank you so much for your time. Now, let me tell you about Mandisa. Mandisa is a successful wedding planner who adds that extra special touch to all her friends' weddings. She's also happily in love with the perfect guy uh, who she's been dating for years. Mandisa's friends and family are now on her case to settle down with the perfect man by becoming his wife. Except there's one problem. Mandisa has got no desire to get married. This is the backdrop on which Dineo Lusenga and Kujo Green's play Mirage is set against, and it asks the question, is there an expectation that women have to desire marriage? Uh, to get into this discussion, I'm joined by actress Dineo Lusenga and director Kujo Green. Ladies, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. It's so funny, now we speak weddings <laughs> like, oh, yeah. wedding, 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 we're like, yeah. why do you want to get married? <laughs> yeah. But what I love is your total honesty in writing this play and obviously putting it together. And you, you're basing a lot of your personal, you know, your personal take, your insights and your experiences on marriage. Mm -hmm. Give me your first impression of marriage when you were younger. Horrible. Was that because of your parents? Yeah, mainly. Yeah. I, I was going to try not to go there. <laughs> you just <laughs> I just did, all the way. N now we're in. Now, now, now we're, we're there, now we're there. No, but um, you know what? I understand what you're saying, mm. right? And to make you feel at ease. Because with, I, I watched my parents be married, right? But I know for a fact he was a better father than he was a, a, a husband. Thank you, absolutely. Right? I've always said but that. But I'm not going yes. to get into that because mm. my mom would always be like, it's jealous about my two Right. So, right. I, I, so I didn't have much of an opinion, but mm. I was just like, I can't fault the man as a father. Right. But go ahead as a husband. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So talk to me. Oh, man. Um, my mom got married when she was very young. Yeah. Um, she had me when she was 17. She had my brother when she was 20. So after that, she was already a wife, you know. Yeah. And I'm the eldest in my family. So growing up, 
I, I knew something was wrong. I saw all of it unfold. Mm. And you know when you're a child, it's not nice to be a child and, and think, <sighs> why is she still here oh. when you're a child? Mm. Um, and my mom only left my dad when I was, when I was in grade 11. Mm. Right, um, and, and it's fine, they both moved on. My dad remarried mm. and, and my mom, I think, is also working very hard at trying to make me understand that, no, listen, it doesn't mean that, you know, if I had a bad marriage, mm. you're gonna, you're have, gonna have a bad okay. marriage as well. And I'm just trying to make it understand that, no, it's just a personal choice. So, so you have to then direct this, Claire, right? Yes. You have to take all of this, <laughs> all of this emotion, yeah. all of this, and I mean justified emotion right. at that. Right. And then you have to put it out on screen. Yeah, on right? stage. On, sorry, on yes. stage. Yes. What is your challenge in handling such a delicate uh, conversation yeah. that we're all having, as well as delicate because it's so personal? Well, for me, the important thing in, at the beginning, I think it was about trying to be inclusive of er everyone's opinions, right? Yes. Trying to be inclusive of everyone's perspective, so we're not trying to isolate anyone, but it was very important that once we got down to some kind of concise storyline, yeah. we needed to make it personal. We needed to make it individual, right? So yeah. Mandy says Tolle, who is this wedding planner, has these perceptions and these feelings around marriage. Yeah. Um, so that was sort of like the guiding um, formula, if I can put it that way, mm -hmm. to staging the piece. Mm -hmm. That it's not talking about every single woman out yeah. there. It's not talking about every single black woman or every single white woman. Yeah. It's talking about this particular woman who is quite actually a gamophobe. And a gamophobe is a person who fears marriage, oh. right? Yeah, so that's what... And it's so strange because she's a wedding planner. Yeah. Yes. So she can yes. exist when she's making money <laughs> yeah, out of completely. it, but not for her. Yeah. No, completely. So she's a gamophobe, um, but it does not mean she... Uh, sh so she, she's, she's okay with commitment. She's okay with being with someone. Yeah. It's just the idea of the institution of marriage that she's completely like, mm, I don't uh. think I can enter that. Um, so those are the sort of like the guiding principles around staging this delicate and very, very controversial kind of yeah. Yeah. Oh, piece because at the end of the day, it's about like, I mean, there's, there's a part where her mom, well, where Mandy says Tolle's mom yeah. says, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the family you know, the Stolle family want to deserve a wedding. Yeah, deserve yeah. a wedding. So what is this thing of like trying to live alternatively, trying to have some kind of alternative arrangement with Tabang, mm. who's the boyfriend in the, in the piece. Does Tabang want to get married? <laughs> oh, yeah. Tabang, yeah, so, so every time Tabang <laughs> suggests they go on holiday, Mandy says, biggest fear is being proposed yeah. to. Mandy says, like, so the friends are just like, what if he proposes? And she's like, he better not. Yeah. He, he better not propose. So. Yeah. We've always been raised to believe that it's women who aspire to the marriage. It's yeah. us who coerce the man. You know, they're like, you must start hinting at three years, otherwise, says our chat, take a sign. <laughs> you know, and here, we, here you are, there's a different play. Do people not say, yeah, but this is all fairy tale. Th this doesn't happen in the real world. In the real world, women want to get married. No, actually, I think the, the piece exceeded our expectation mm. as far as the audience's reaction was concerned. Mm, yeah. So we, we, I mean, we were in the workshop process for, for months and, and thinking, oh, are people going to like this? Are people going to relate, right? Mm. And we showed it for four days, Anele, and everyone, every single woman came to us and said, I'm glad you did this. Oh. I can so relate. I'm glad that someone is finally talking about this. Mm. I especially appreciated one guy's opinion who came to us and said, as a black successful man, you made me reflect <gasps> on my own life. He's not married. Oh. And, and he, he has no desire to get married. No desire to get yeah. married. And he gets bombarded with the same questions as well. You've got money, you've, you've studied, you're well educated. Yeah. Why are you not married? Something Something's must be wrong, wrong with, with you. you. Yeah. Are you gay? Yes. You're like, well, yes. I can get married if I'm gay too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Because right. they're always trying to find what's wrong with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, an ex of mine once said to me, people who don't want to get married, they want to get married. It's just that the person that they want to marry doesn't want to marry them. <laughs> And I took such offense to it. <laughs> and I think today's the first time I've actually been able to speak. But I was like, as you're in no? So, Kutso, what's your take on that? Because uh, you don't want to look like, you know, the angry woman who totally. got jilted by the guy yeah. she likes and now she's just like, I'll never get married. Totally. And I think the thing is, um, yo, and that's where the beauty of theater comes in, right? Where we start educating ourselves and our families and our friends around us, around um, people being able to be their own people, yeah. right? Um, so it's very important. And I mean, this piece did that as well, where we really were pushing the idea that alternative living companionship union um, exists. And so part of Woo! the... Oh, <laughs> 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 no, can I tell you something? 
tell you? Can I tell you the strangest thing that I told, like I tell people about, like a, per, a couple that literally is in love with each other, committed to one another, but neither of them share a house. Neither of them share a house. They, they are of the they higher are. economy bracket. Yeah. Just that <laughs> and can I tell you, I know a black couple that, and quite old as well, quite yeah. wise that do that. And about like what Like I'm telling you now. So I mean, it's, it's things that we don't know about, but they do exist. Mm. And and I think for me, what was so important about this piece was for women not to be seen as failures if they didn't get married. Yes. For women not to be. I mean, um, they call them mafit. The one that was. Yeah. Yeah. By what yes. a yes. mean statement what is that? to make. But, what is that? But also for women to, to not feel like failures when they decide to leave yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah. Because yeah. women stay in marriages and and the thought of, of being considered a failure because you can't stand the situation anymore. Yeah. You'd mm. rather stay yeah. than, than have people say, oh, mm. you couldn't keep your man. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you, you couldn't keep this yeah. marriage working. Because apparently it's up to you to make sure that it but works. But yeah. oh, she must be cold. Yeah. Why yeah. can't she keep a man? Yeah. yeah. Why can't he be kept? <laughs> On the other side of the break, this conversation is joined by someone who has a total opposing view to what Kutso and Dineo is speaking about. It's about to get interesting. And welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. Is marriage for everyone? Well, that depends entirely on you. We are concluding our conversation with my guest, Dineo Lusenga Kuto Green, as, and we welcome Managing Director of I Do Magazine, which also hosts the I Do Awards. I do awards. I want to know all about that. Uh, Felicia Butilez is here. We're weighing in on whether or not there's still expectations placed on women to aspire to marriage. So obviously you want people to get married because you've got a magazine to, to, oh, to publish. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, Anele, I saw a gap in the market for a publication that speaks to a married woman. Yeah. The only thing that I would find when um, after I got married was wedding, 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 wedding. So there was nothing that encourages and uh, a married woman, a married life. What, what are married women not hearing that you feel they should be hearing? Uh, that they are powerful, uh -huh. that there is more um, that they, 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 they can do besides just being married. Okay. So marriage is not uh, their destiny. Mm. And the things, you know, the, the level and the seasons that happens when people are married. Yeah. So I want people to know that because I wanted somebody to tell me about that. So I created a platform, mm. um, I do magazine, uh, so that I can share the stories, real life stories mm. of different uh, couples, the young ones, the old ones mm. and those who aspire to get married to learn so, from. Do you, know, do you not find that there's always a certain, especially at events, there's always an isolation. Married <laughs> ones there, single <laughs> ones there. And what's your take on that? I think, first of all, we, we do that in society before you even get to, to, to weddings. Yeah. You know, um, a question of who, who do you stay with? Oh, I stay alone. Or, oh, okay, so are you, are you married? Um, you know, uh. or if you say you stay alone, are you seeing someone who's potentially going to marry yeah, you, right? Yeah. And in, in terms of weddings, um, I, I, our families do a lot of like traditional weddings yeah. and we don't have that segregation part, yeah. but it always comes up in the conversations. You don't have to be sitting with the singles or with people who are married, but it always comes up for, oh, Anele Washata today, we're now we're now you know, so those conversations do come up and, and I think we should stop that. We should stop making women feel like they are less than the woman who's married. Mm. We should stop making women feel like there's a man who's going to come and make you feel worthy mm. of I, being married. I do is not designed to make women who, are, who don't aspire to marriage mm. to feel less of mm. being a woman. Mar I do is for a married woman. Mm. But I mean, you if, know, if, and, if and less and less people are getting married, you know, how are you... Because you, you're still trying to, because you believe in the institution of marriage. Yes. And rightfully so, because yes. that's, that's what you believe in. Yes. So do you not find your job is getting more and more difficult to convince people about the institution? Um, no, it's not difficult. At because all. At all. It's mm. not difficult at all. I do know that there are women like Dineo who mm. doesn't like to get married. Mm. But we need to address the issue behind that fear. 
Because Maybe it isn't a fear. Mm. You know mm. what? Okay. And yeah. you know when I listen to her story, because yeah. I did, a personal story is about the home that she's coming from. Yeah. So you can't conclude and decide Uguti, uh, marriage is not working because umsha toga mama angse benzilanga. So you can't uh, now adopt ama mistakes ka mama na ma mistakes ka baba and say this is what I'm going to experience na mimsha tunwami. I do have people uh, who have terrible terrible experiences at home and they came out and decide they are going to be intentional with their own mm. marriage and marriage mina i see as a place of healing i see it as a place where i can be vulnerable with my husband and tell him what who i am mm. the core of who i am you know mm. and 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 for me it's a place of healing not mm. a place where a woman needs to be condemned or feel Can I less. Just jump in there, yeah. sorry. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's what I've been trying to explain to my mother <laughs> that yeah. it, it's not that. And that's what we're trying to do with Mirage. That yes, Mirage. My, Mirage. <laughs> yes, that it's 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 a choice. Yeah. And we're trying to to create a platform where women like myself who have no desire to get married, be it from a personal experience or because it's not something that they, they want, want to do, it. that they yeah. can have a platform to freely express that without people having to say it's a fear. Kutso, do you, do you think it is possible for someone to choose not to want to get married and they're not operating from a place of fear or disappointment or hesitation? Just, gee, I don't want to get married. Completely, yeah. completely. And it also extends itself to women who don't want to, like, who don't want children, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, I've had that sentiment and I still had that sentiment. And so when I once spoke about, like, trying to extract my womb, people were like, what? No, you cannot do that. Yeah. But I'm like, it's my body though. Like, so yeah. what happens about, um, trying to police what, what I do with my body. This is yeah. my body and I can do what I want with it. And so I think it's very crucial that we try to understand where people are coming from, first mm. and foremost, and that not everything is, is about like my background mm. and what I've experienced, you know, so it can really be a choice that I don't want to. I, okay. But we're out of time. <laughs> what oh my God, <laughs> but I just wanted to raise one thing. I just want to see a Kutso out there who's living a single life beautifully yeah. that every single woman would love and aspire to 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 live like Guto. Yeah. Because what is happening? I what I see the most is that most single women they talk about us. <laughs> uh, they talk about marriage. <laughs> they talk about how miserable we are. Can I you know, I want, wait, I wait, want wait. to see a Guto who to is go. going we to. We have to go. We're yes. going to do this you know, again. I want to Thanks see a single so woman. Much, my guest today. Okay, bye -bye. Uh, tomorrow on Real Talk, we've got a special treat for you as we delve into the world of psychic mediums. Find out what your future holds for you. We'll chat to Sangoma, a psychic. There's a tarot card reader. There's a numerologist. Isi Dingo is coming up next. And this conversation will continue. <laughs> <laughs>